Hi, this is Zach of Warner Wound. Today I'll be taking a look at two versions of the Archimedia Outdoor. Uh, this is actually a watch we reviewed a couple years ago, so this is a uh, re-review, if you will. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to see it was because after seeing a ton of watches for two years, this one kind of stuck out in our memories as being um, much more unique than I think we appreciated it for at the time. Um, and, you know, just to start at the bat, this watch really is uh, unlike any other watch out there, especially at the price, just in both the simple design cues and I think, you know, the idea behind it as well as the execution. It's a, it's a very interesting watch. It, it might be hit or miss design-wise for people, but um, what you have is, is quite cool. But also since we reviewed it, they've come out with two new versions and um, we have two representations of that here. There's a bunch of uh, variations within them, dial color and, and strap option. But they came out the PVD model, uh, pretty straightforward, PVD case, uh, two dial options, either full loom dial or the or a black dial with uh, loom markers. And then perhaps more interestingly is the outdoor protect, which has replaced the uh, normal outdoor model. It's identical to it in all ways except for that it has a hardened steel case and a hardened steel bracelet with a hardening of up to 1200 uh, Vickers, which if you're familiar with Sin's tegumenting technology is, is on par with that, though it doesn't say if it is tegumented or if it's a different uh, version, but that still makes it highly scratch resistant, uh, which is really cool at this price range. This watch on bracelet comes in at 750 and this one in PVD comes in at 800 um, with the full loom dial on the leather strap. So let's take a closer look. The case of the Archimedia Outdoor is one of the more standout features of the watch. Uh, it's a small barrel shaped case. First when you think about barrel shaped cases, generally speaking I think of 70s watches, but in this circumstance it, I think it's not really about that. It doesn't feel like a retro design at all. I think that the design is really smart for the concept of an outdoor uh, sport watch. So everything on this watch is fairly smooth. Uh, you know, there's no sharp angles on the case. There's no lugs sticking out that would be, you know, long or pointy. Basically, there's nothing on this that's going to catch on to something. And I think that that is smart for a watch that you, you know, might be wearing hiking or, you know, doing any kind of outdoor activity, as, as they put it. But it, it, there's at least there's a concept behind having the barrel ship case that's uh, different than aesthetics. It's also a very small case, um, but one that I, I mean I happen to really appreciate the size of. It's 38.5 in diameter. Uh, it's not really round at any point, so diameter is a little ambiguous, but at kind of its smallest point it's 38.5, a little bit larger at the crown. It's, uh, it's only about like 43 millimeters from lug to lug, so it's nice and short that way, which you know just makes it uh, fit on top of the wrist very well. And then it's an 11 millimeter height, so it's also fairly flat. Um, but yeah, the, everything on this design kind of speaks to uh, a, kind of an aerodynamic kind of a concept. So even at the lugs here, you have this really nice chamfer that comes over um, and that makes sure that, you know, there's no hard edge there. It just kind of smoothly flows in. The crown guards here, which are nice and large, um, are also tapered up towards this. So it's a really smooth line. Like you can't catch anything on that crown guard, but they still protect this crown. And it is actually a really nice large crown. It's seven millimeters in diameter, um, of like three or four millimeters tall. So it's got a nice like thick Ness to it. It's really sturdy, really easy to, to uh, grasp. Um, it's just a nice proportion. I think it actually just also looks nice with the case. It has big slots on it and an Archimede A on the end, so it's nicely detailed too. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just this, this kind of great svelte design. This one, like I said, is hardened, so that's, you know, this new feature of the outdoor, uh, the outdoor protect model. Um, and so it has a 1200 Vicker case, which is going to be really nice and scratch resistant, uh, which just also adds to kind of the utility of the watch. For the finishing, you have this kind of dull brushing. It, it's a little different. I wonder if it's been affected a little bit by the hardening process. So it's brushed, but it's also a little bit matte underneath that. It's, it's kind of in between the two, but I think it looks nice on the watch. Uh, the bezel here is a little bit more polished. Now looking at the PVD model, Obviously, it kind of takes this design and makes it very stealth and very sleek. Um, I really like how the PVD uh, works on this design. You know, I always think of kind of like Batman or armor or something when you see PVD watches. But in this case, it, it really feels that way. What, what was just, you know, kind of uh, nimble and, and ergonomic here feels um, very, you know, kind of futuristic and utilitarian the way these angles come together. And it's, it just looks very, very cool. Uh, flipping the watch over, both have a really simple screw down case back, just say Archimedia Outdoor on it. Um, if I were to make one kind of, uh, you know, one thing I'd like to see change on the Outdoor uh, Protect model, 
it doesn't say the hardness on the back. It doesn't say protect on it. In fact, it doesn't say protect anywhere on it. So there's a little hard, uh, it's a little hard to distinguish between this model and the old model without, say, taking a tool to it and trying to scratch it, which you would never want to do. The dial of the Archimedia Outdoor is very straightforward with a focus on legibility. Um, in some ways, it's almost a little plain looking, and you know that might be a negative comment. But as you wear it, I found that I got used to it and I, I eventually appreciated it, though it's not like a very sexy or stylized dial. Uh, that said, it has a feature on it that I've never seen on any other watch and I think is extremely cool. Um, but first, just looking at it, so, you know, there are two dial options, the luminous dial and then a black dial, which I'll show you in a second. Um, this is not white. I mean, it is white, but it's full loom, so it'll charge up and it'll glow kind of an even bluish green. Um, I'm kind of, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about uh, full loom dials, like they're different, there's a different look to them than a white dial, which is usually a bit crisper. And, you know, if you've gone in the sun and you go, go inside, you get, um, you know, a kind of a bluish tint to it. So it's always kind of active, um, which just makes the watch very, very sporty. You know, I think a, a watch like this can blend kind of back and forth uh, to be a little bit of, you know, a business casual watch as well as a sport watch. But the full loom makes it a little bit just more of a straight up sport watch. Anyway, looking at the dial now, you have this uh, main index that consists of large black squares and then black numerals that follow the squares around, uh, matching the angle. Um, it has kind of a, you know, it's a simple, has almost like a, a German looking uh, design to it. Nothing fancy going on there. At three, you have a date window. I think it's always a, a white, a black number on a white date, uh, regardless of the dial color. Uh, below 12, you have Archimede, and above 6, you have uh, a few lines of text. It says outdoor, water is 200 meters, slash 666 feet, then automatic. Um, now, the feature that I really like about this watch is actually the chapter ring. So when you're looking at the watch straight down, you have this chamfered ring that you see, and it has, you know, the minutes on there, seconds on there for reference. What's amazing is that it's it's like a tall chapter ring that's also been printed vertically. So on the inside of that, you have extra hash marks. And since you're never really looking at anything truly straight on, you know, there's uh, distortion from the way you look at things and it's, you know, you're probably looking at a little bit of an angle, you get this cool kind of second reference that is hidden vertically rather than making the you know, dial wider. So it's a really interesting way to do it that I think is extremely effective. You know, if you imagine, say, like riding a bike or something where the watch is at an angle at all times, you know, it's going to be a very uh, helpful tool to see it like that. So I think that's just uh, brilliant. On, the, on this model, the hands are, you know, just totally matte black as they act as like a shadow on top of the full loom. Uh, they're blocky, they're easy to distinguish from each other. Um, they're very simple, but I think that they work. Now looking at the black dial with white markers. Um, I think this is a little bit more striking, perhaps, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than the black on white. You also have the more articulated hands, which have loom in them. Um, on this one, the loom is uh, BGW9, I believe it's called, which is that blue loom, so it glows really nice and bright and blue. I, I think it works really well. Um, but in both cases, I just I think it's a very clever design that you know, if you're looking for something that's really more function than it is uh, aesthetic, this is definitely a, a, a cool uh, and just well-executed dial. On the wrist, the Archimedia Outdoor wears exceptionally well. Um, the size and the design really come through as, as just very well thought out. So you have a watch that's uh, comfortable to wear, uh, easy to wear, definitely will fit, you know, I think a nice range of wrists. I have a seven inch wrist here and I think it fits very nicely, um, especially on the bracelet, which adds a little bit more metal to it. I think that that, you know, kind of, uh, not that there's anything wrong with the smaller watch. I do prefer smaller watches, but that I think just makes it kind of a little bit more substantial. Uh, the barrel shaped design is really, I mean, I just, I like it a lot here and more so I think than other uh, barrel shape watches I've seen and I think it's because the proportions are kept so down and the chamfered edge uh, really just gives it this you know nice flow from the case into the bracelet um, and then the look you know it's a very uh, smart looking watch you know it's not loud in any way it's not uh, trying to draw attention to itself it's very purposeful uh, very functional um, I think this is, a, you know, though it is a sport watch, and I like that they really made it and built it to be a sport watch, especially with the hardened case. Um, on the bracelet, I mean, this is absolutely acceptable on any occasion. You know, it's not um, trying too hard to be tough or rugged or anything like that. It's, it's reserved. And, you know, as such, I think it kind of plays into the kinds of like a gentleman's sport watch, like early, you know, Rolex Explorers, uh, watches like that. Um, and I just, you know, I love that 
kind of aesthetic. The bracelet, um, it comes on, if you go for that option, there's also a, a rubber option and a, a, a leather option, but I think especially if you're going to get the hardened version, the bracelet's the way to go because it is a hardened bracelet, which, you know, you're not going to find elsewhere, you're not going to find secondhand, and frankly, at the price of this for $750 with a hardened bracelet, I mean, that's really exceptional. Uh, the bracelet design, um, it's nice, it's very simple, but it actually feels a lot like a vintage bracelet in a way I like. Like, it's not a super tight bracelet, so you get a little bit of give in here, especially at the lugs. So the watch has 18 millimeter lugs, which is a bit smaller than you'd expect. Like, I'd figure this would have 20, but it is 18, but the bracelet they feature on, as you can see, is wider than the actual lug gap. So it's 22 millimeters lot wide here, so it flows nicely from the case into the bracelet, and then that tapers to 18. So it has this, you know, it's just a nice vintage design, it's thin, it's easy uh, to wear for a long time. So I think that's a really nice option. We'll show you other options as well, but first I'll show you what the uh, PVD model looks like on the wrist. The PVD model wears just as well as the steel model, but you know, obviously it has kind of a sleeker, more stealth appearance to it. Um, the white dial black case option uh, is actually, it's, it's quite stark and startling almost. So this one is not as discreet as the black dial black case option. And I think honestly, if I were to, you know, you know go for the samples again, I wanted to see both dials, but the black dial black case black uh, bracelet option, I think is a, really cool looking. It's very uh, kind of vicious looking and aggressive, but at the same time has this, you know, generally understated design and, and it's nice and, you know, small and everything. So it's a, it's a really actually cool PVD watch that I think is a little bit different than other PVD watches, which tend to be uh, just over the top in some way. They're too big, they're too gnarly. You know, this one's spelt, so which uh, I think is really cool. But um, I think this is still a very a, a nice look. It's definitely more sporty than this, the steel case, so um, while you know, I'm sure you could still wear this to an office, it definitely speaks a little bit less to kind of a business casual aesthetic, but uh, perhaps more to you know, kind of being uh, in the outdoors or camping or something like that. The leather strap option that uh, it can come with uh, is, is it's a nice leather strap. It's a, kind of a, a whole grain uh, leather, uh, so it has a nice texture to it. Um, it's a straight cut, which is the one thing that I, I don't love about it. But like the bracelet, it actually starts at 22, wider than the, uh, the lug width itself to uh, match the case. Then it has this internal kind of uh, shoulder here that wraps around the spring bar, but it doesn't taper, so it kind of loses the elegance of that curve in going in here. Uh, that said, it's you know, a nice sturdy sport strap. Uh, one thing that's funny about it though is that uh, it's, it's a very long strap. Like I have it on the smallest hole, and to be honest, I'd like it to be on one hole smaller than that. So that might be a concern for some people to leave a smaller than seven inch wrist. Uh, now we'll take a look on just some totally different strap options. Just want to show you what the uh, Outdoor Protect steel model looks like on a uh, leather strap. This is actually a quarter inch strap by Rios. Uh, I really liked how it looked. I was a little surprised, you know. Uh, the one funny thing is the 18 millimeter um, going into the parallel shaped case, so you have a little bit of this gap here. But I think because the watch is so small that it still wears very nicely, and I think this actually dresses it up even more than the bracelet. Um, typically, I find bracelets to be the dressier option, but here I think that this adds a little bit of kind of a an elegant, more fashionable style to it that would just make it really easy to wear uh, to an office, out to a bar, or whatever. You know, I think the brown looks good with the black. Looks great with like a blue shirt. Um, but yeah, just you know, showing you that this watch can be dressed up. It's 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 very nice like this. Another option is uh, the inevitable NATO option. Here put on a black and uh, gray stripe, uh, you know, bond style NATO. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have one with, with PVD hardware. That'd be kind of the ultimate combo for this, but I thought that this look, looked really nice with this watch. You know, the white, the black, um, throwing in the gray in there gives you a nice range of tones. Obviously, it's very sporty looking, um, so it just works well with this. I just, you know, any watch that you can put a bracelet, a rubber strap, a leather strap, a NATO on and kind of get different effect. Uh, it's just very versatile, which means you'll get more use out of it. So, another cool option. To wrap up, uh, after not seeing the Archimedia Outdoor for a couple of years, I think that uh, it's actually a much cooler watch than I even remember. Um, it, the design of it is really smart. I really like that the case uh, speaks to this function of kind of sportiness and outdoors without trying really hard to be super rugged or super tough. It's really, it's more of a, of a nimble approach and I, I really like that because it makes a very wearable watch, a watch that uh, looks really smart, can kind of translate 
from uh, the outdoors to the biz to an office and, and what have you. And um, y you know, uh, apart from that, though, what really makes this watch exceptional is the pricing. The uh, the outdoor uh, protect model in particular. 1200 Vicar case hardened at $750 on a bracelet. There's nothing else like that. Uh, both powered by Salita SW200 movements made in Germany by the Ickler family. Um, you know, these are kind of best in class watches. Uh, so, yeah, please read the full uh, review on Worn and Wound. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you.